2018 and taking responsibility for the things he did on behalf of Donald Trump. NBC News has learned Cohen is on the list of witnesses expected to be called to testify in the former president's hush money criminal trial with jury selection set to begin on Monday in New York. Cohen, you'll remember, pleaded guilty in 2018 to campaign finance charges related to hush money payments made to two women just before the 2016 election, including adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Joining us now is legal advisor to Michael Cohen, Lanny Davis, and state attorney for Palm Beach County, Florida, Dave Ehrenberg. Good morning to you both. Uh, Lan Lanny, let me start with you. Uh, can you confirm that Michael Cohen will be a witness in this trial? Uh, yes. He will be a witness in this trial. So we, we should remind people that Michael Cohen went to jail for over a year for charges related to this. He served home, home confinement for another year and a half or so, almost three years of time served. Um, so as you look at this, Lanny, what is this trial about exactly? We've got some distance from it, about eight years since these payments were made in October of 2016, just before Election Day. What is this a trial about the way you see it? Well, let me quote Donald Trump's Justice Department's prosecutors in public when they made the charge that Donald Trump, and they wrote this, directed Michael Cohen to pay this money to Ms. Daniels. They said this case is about the impairment of democracy by allowing wealthy people such as Mr. Trump to buy silence a few days before the election to prevent the American people from gaining information they need. They describe this case as about democracy. That's the Federal District of New York, Southern District of New York prosecutors in a public document hiding in plain sight. So every time someone describes this in a disparaging way as about sex or something else, quote Donald Trump's prosecutors describing this case as seriously about the undermining of democracy. Lanny, can um, can Alvin Bragg in a state court in New York uh, make that connection? Can he uh, go beyond the the, yes. the narrower violations of, of you know falsifying business records and 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 how that became a felony? Can he go beyond that to make the connection to the election? Not not so narrow. He has uh, charged Mr. Trump thirty five for thirty four felony counts, and those involve thirty four times that he booked as expenses for legal services, what federal prosecutors working for his administration described as payments to silence somebody right before an election, which made them illegal. So the answer is yes, he can connect the federal violation of fraud to New York state crimes, at least three of them, and he laid them out in the indictment. But yes, uh, Eugene, that is definitely part of the case. So, Dave Ehrenberg, you're a prosecutor, and we can already figure out what the Trump defense is going to be about Michael Cohen. They're going to paint him as an untrustworthy witness. They're going to say he pleaded guilty to lying to Congress. Um, they're going to say you shouldn't believe a word this man says. So how do you then, as the prosecution, how do you use Cohen effectively with that as the backdrop? Yeah, Jonathan, the reason why Michael Cohen went to prison for lying and for other felonies was because he was lying for Donald Trump. And it was, as Lanny said, for the felonies that are at issue here. So he's going to try to attack Michael Cohen, but Cohen will have corroboration. That's key for prosecutors. Corroboration in the form of Stormy Daniels herself and even perhaps Hope Hicks, a loyalist to Donald Trump, including David Pecker, the head of the former uh, National Enquirer. Uh, also, I think that Trump will try to use the John Edwards defense, which is these payments were not for campaign reasons. They were to protect his family. But that can be easily debunked. You know, he's going to try to say, I was trying to protect Melania from finding out. But Cohen and Stormy Daniels' lawyer first spoke about this affair in 2011. So this was known for years within Team Trump, and yet no money changed hands until two weeks before the election. So that is really damaging. Plus, as far as falsification of business records, why do that if you're just trying to protect the information from Melania? Melania was not likely to pour over the books of the Trump Organization, which is a private company. So why falsify these internal records just to keep it secret from her, unless you knew it was a campaign election crime? Uh, but also, Trump allegedly directed Michael Cohen to delay paying Stormy Daniels until after the election, because he didn't want to pay her at all. And after the election, it wouldn't matter. Why? Because Trump knew this was about the campaign. So there are a lot of good facts for the prosecution. And in the end, I think this is headed towards a conviction.
You've seen um, some of the names, Dave Ehrenberg, for, uh, on the prosecution, possible witness list for the prosecution. Uh, is there anybody in particular you would call that you'd be interested in their testimony? Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks gave some different testimony when she appeared before Congress, Joe. And I'm interested in seeing what she says now. She did testify before the grand jury, and she is a Trump loyalist. She was the one who was like, like steaming his pants on uh, Air Force One. And now she's going to be there to corroborate Michael Cohen. And when they talk about, you know, Michael Cohen being the star witness. All of these people that are there are going to have their cooperating witnesses. They're either there's either going to be documents or there's going to be other people backing up that Michael Michael Cohen's, you know, version of events. We've heard a lot of talk from Trump going into the trial publicly. Do you think he'll take the stand in his own defense? And who else might we see on the defense witness list? I was going to say, whether Donald Trump takes this, they're saying right now he's on, he's on the defense witness list. I don't know. I, I, and I think anything could happen. I think he's often advised not to, but he does it against um, his lawyer's advice. I think the worry if Donald Trump does take the stand is just how that will go. He's often his own worst enemy. We saw it in the gets, aging hair. Okay, we did, right. and, and we've seen it in depositions so over the years. Yeah, he, he often will say things that, that hurt him. So, Paul, Trump sent out a fundraising email this morning, and I quote, 72 hours until all hell breaks loose, he writes. My first thought was, this sounds like language we heard before January 6th. Your reaction? Uh, yeah, that's right. So we think of Trump's two big occasions in his public life right now, his campaign for president and his four criminal prosecutions. But we know Trump doesn't think of those as really separate incidents. He blends his campaign and his um, his criminal prosecutions. And when he uses that kind of rhetoric, again, he just invites gag orders. And then he complains that judges are trying to shut him up. But once again, that furthers his presidential ambitions because it plays into this sense of him and some of his supporters that he's being persecuted, including by the Biden administration, which is he has said about this case, the hush money case, uh, that's absurd. This is a state case. Alvin Bragg does not report to the attorney general or to the president. But again, the facts don't get in the way in terms of the campaign, but it's going to be quite different on Monday in that courtroom on a, a judge merchant runs a tough courtroom. Suzanne, let's talk about the Manhattan District Attorney at the center of this, Alvin Bragg, who brought the charges. Um, there was this fascinating profile that the New York Times Magazine did on him and his approach to this case. They write in part, after the indictment, a chorus of critics, some but not all on the right, question the legal reasoning, wisdom and winnability of the hush money case. Today, many experts believe that Bragg's legal strategy looks considerably stronger. What do we know about his mindset, his preparation going into this trial, the first criminal trial right. against a former president and the man who is the presumptive Republican nominee for 2024. Right. It's interesting. This case was not considered to be even going forward when he first took office. The, the previous uh, district attorney had decided not to move forward with it. So there's been a lot of back and forth about it. It's definitely the, the least consequential criminally of, of the cases in front. But Alvin Bragg decided that this was the case he was going to go forward with. And it's it's an interesting one. He's got to try, tie a lesser charge, this falsifying of business records, you know, with a felony in order to sort of make it work. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think, you know, in, in one hand, I see sort of the, 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 the critics have said, you know, this is, there's just been a lot of questions about it, I guess. But you can see also from a jury's point of view, this is going to be a case that I think will be easy for them to grasp. It involves a, a payment, a hush money payment to an adult film store to star in the final days of an election. There's a lot of theater around it, and I think that it will be appealing to a jury. And I, I think that was probably one of the reasons it was appealing to the DA's office when they decided to go forward with it. And so, folks, what you just witnessed there was something great. The walls of Donald Trump's delusion crumbling down. Don Donald Trump's delusion crashing face first into a wall of reality. And it showcases how he continues to humiliate Melania and she's not happy about it. Because fundamentally, this trial, I know it's about more than just who was paid off in Donald Trump's illicit affairs and all of that. It's really about election interference and falsifying records for businesses and fraud and all of that.
But the, the hook of the story is that Donald Trump humiliated his wife. And you don't have to feel bad for Melania Trump to recognize that that's kind of embarrassing for her. And the argument they're going to make is to center her humiliation as the centerpiece of the trial, which she is not happy about. She doesn't like that because it makes her the center of focus when she just wants to hang out down at Mar-a-Lago and go to the spa every day. But more than that, you see the bombshells by Michael Cohen and you see Trump's desperation. There's a reason why he's threatening the judge right now more than ever. Right. Again, a man that's not unhinged and a man that's confident in the his case does not act like this. The reason why his wife, his former lawyer and the judge are all at his throat is because he knows in his heart he's guilty. 